Uh, the drama in the House continues with these crazed, deranged Republicans. We don't have a House speaker yet. Uh, we continue our conversation with Avis Jones DeWeaver, as well as my panelists. Uh, here was the moment, y'all, today that was absolutely laughable when Texas Congressman Chip Roy uh, put a Florida Congressman Byron Donald's name in nomination for Speaker of the House, and they had their moment of civil rights history. Yesterday, my first vote for Speaker of the House was for Byron Donalds. Today, I'm rising to nominate Byron Donalds for Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> Byron is a dear friend a solid conservative, but most importantly, a family man who loves dearly his wife Erica, his three children, has a proven track record as a businessman, public service in the Florida legislature, and now as a member of the United States Congress. Now, here we are, and for the first time in history, there have been two black Americans placed into the nomination for Speaker of the House. There's one point there, uh, Scott, where there was, a, there, was, there was a cutaway to Matt Gates. He was like, to Democrats, yeah, y'all stand up. Man, sit your ass down. <laughs> and again, sit your ass down. I mean, the, the reality is this. Um, let me tell you, it's, it's even worse for McCarthy and embarrassing for the Republicans because McCarthy, let's say through some miracle he wins, he will never be able to govern. Because he's cut so many deals, it's like when you're in the middle of the road and you're begging for power and someone holds that over you, then you're going to get run over by a truck or car. So that's the first thing. I expect him to withdraw his name after 8 o'clock when they come back. What is interesting and what we're not talking about is who the alternative is that is really good at marshalling votes and could be Speaker of the House, whether they're in the House or whether they are outside of the House. I think the discussions are about who's next, who's coming up, not about whether McCarthy can survive or not. He's the walking dead. What's also interesting, uh, Roland, is that we know how much the Republicans love power, and yet their thirst for power and to control the House has not been able uh, to bring those 20 Freedom Caucus members to, members to the middle and to vote for McCarthy. They'd rather be embarrassed, and have someone else be speaker. This is personal for a lot of them, and I think that's how it's manifested itself with this shit show over seven votes. Well, here's the deal. I, I, I get Scott's point, Avis, but here's the deal. To say, well, who's going to be the next choice? Here's the problem. You still have the 20 members of the Freedom Caucus. They need 218. Democrats ain't helping nobody on the Republican side. So the Republicans are going to have to figure out how to get the 218. And so it raises the question, do you have somebody who is amenable to both? Is it Steve Scalise? Well, we know he's a David Duke without, uh, without the KKK hood. Um, and he has his own issues as well. And remember, if five Republicans say no, it ain't happening. So that's why I think it's just laughable watching this whole thing play out uh, because, you know, they are sort of stuck in limbo. And this is what happens when you negotiate with terrorists. Kevin McCarthy's greatest mistake was you negotiated with terrorists. OK, they don't care about blowing the joint up. They're fine with that. Absolutely, because they're 
whole agenda is not to govern, right? Their whole agenda is to tear shit down. I mean, that's really what they are there for. That's, that is where they get the bona fides among their constituents, the people who, who voted them in. And they are really sort of appealing to that, in essence, batshit crazy element of the population. And they're bringing the batshit crazy right into the halls of Congress. That, but what you're saying here is the big question, right? Who is the alternative? And we do know that they're not limited to members of Congress. They're not limited to somebody that's in the House of Representatives. So it would be interesting to think who would satisfy the batshit crazies at the same time satisfying the more traditional conservatives and the sort of the middle of the road people and the more sort of moderate Republicans. Does that person even exist? And, you know, honestly, as I rack my brain, I really don't know that they do, but I guess they're going to have to figure something out or else we're going to sit here for God knows how long uh, without movement in this area, uh, without the ability to sort of swear in the new people who were just elected to Congress, and once again, displaying the dysfunction of the Republican Party to this nation and to the entire world. Um, I, I used this phrase earlier, um, Jason, you don't negotiate with terrorists. Let me remind people, the leaders against Kevin McCarthy were the insurrectionist. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no question about it. Um, I think, you know, people are talking about bringing up Justin Amash, uh, who is no longer in Congress. But again, to be speaker, you don't necessarily have to be in Congress. But you, um, right, the, the Constitution says that, but you need 218. Right, you need 218. That's absolutely... Uh, true. But they're talking about bringing some people have even brought up Trump's name, but I don't think Trump would get to 18. He wouldn't. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not sure who uh, they could actually get that would, you know, appease all factions of the of the Republican Party. And, you know, I, it's funny because Democrats are known as the big tent party. We heard all the time about how Nancy Pelosi couldn't get along with the squad and how many times, and, and I said this uh, the other day on the show, you know, I can't tell you how many times I went and had to answer these kinds of questions on Fox News or, or other conservative outlets about how Nancy Pelosi and the squad were beefing and they couldn't get things done. And we saw them get a whole lot done, particularly in this last con Congress. And now you see they can't even vote for the speaker. You know, uh, and can't and it's gone through what almost seven It's going to be seven votes. So I, I, I agree with every what everyone else has said. This is going nowhere. I mean, I, I think, like I said, I, I think that they're going to realize that they have to give the gavel to to uh, McCarthy, because whom else are they going to give it to? Like, that's my question. If y'all can answer that then, you know, I, I'll give up on McCarthy. But I think at some point they've got to come to the senses, come to their senses and say, we really don't have anybody that we're all going to agree upon and that they have to give the gavel to somebody. Well, uh, again, I, I, I just got to keep reminding people, uh, Monique, when you when you're looking at and analyzing this whole deal here, this is what these folks know and understand. We can withhold our votes and break your backs. And they know it. And it's 20 of them. So let, let's just say, okay, let's just say 10 buckle. You still ain't at 218. Mm -hmm. You literally need 16 to buckle. It's five who have said they are adamant they will never support Kevin McCarthy. It's a little hard to get somebody off adamant. <laughs> right. Uh, it, well, you know, there are a few different things going on. So I got, it's about, not, I got about 40 seconds. So you can't go it, to that many different things. Go. OK, well, I'll do the first one. Um, it's the Republican processes that the 90 percent are really fighting for. It's not McCarthy. It's the fact that they had private votes and the overwhelming majority of them selected a speaker and they want their rules to hold up. So they're stuck because they're dealing with 14 of 15 incumbents against him who don't care about rules, who don't care about democracy, who said that the last election was fraudulent and a lie. 
Um, so they are living with what they have allowed for right. and what they created. All right, folks, back to our Roadblock Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 